This is starting to get kind of difficult sitting down every week and preparing one of these prediction videos and then a recap video when your team is underperforming. Maybe this could be the week that the Broncos turn things around, but then again, maybe not. Who knows? It's week three, Broncos at Dolphins. Let's talk about it. What is going on Broncos country? Super happy to be back with you for another video, um, another week of NFL football that we get to talk about, specifically our Denver Broncos. So if this is your first time here, if you're a Broncos fan or you're a fan of the NFL in general, be sure to click that subscribe button. That way you stay up to date anytime I post a new video. Click that bell button. And if you wanna go ahead and do it right now, click the thumbs up, but you don't have to do that right now. As I've mentioned, my last two prediction videos for the Broncos has not gone very well. I picked the Broncos to win in both games and that did not happen. So maybe this week will be different. Who knows? We'll see what happens when we get to the end here. Before we do that, I did want to remind you that I will be doing the pigskin pick at the end of the episode here, the end of the video. So if you're involved in that group, uh, be sure you get your picks in by Thursday. We'll talk a little bit more about it um, once we get to that point in the video here, but make sure you get your picks in by Thursday. That way you can get every point you possibly can because the winner gets a $100 gift card. So let's go ahead and get to this breakdown of the Broncos at the Miami Dolphins. Miami is a six and a half point favorite in this game and the over under is set at 48 points. And I think that that's fair. I think it's fair, especially with the way that Miami's offense has been playing, the way that the Broncos offense has been playing. I think those are fair numbers um, for us to be sitting at in this game. And just like every week, we're going to be breaking down the Broncos offense versus our opponent's defense, Broncos defense versus our opponent's offense. And then we're going to look at the coaching matchup. And this week is an interesting coaching matchup, in my opinion. So when it comes to the Broncos offense versus the Dolphins defense, this one is going to be a very interesting game. Why, you ask? Well, Vic Fangio is the defensive coordinator for the Miami Dolphins. You might be aware of that name. You've probably heard it before. Used to be the head coach of the Denver Broncos. Vic is arguably my least favorite head coach that we've had since Josh McDaniels. I will say I am looking forward to this game with the idea of maybe make being able to make him look silly. But at the same time, he is such a good defensive-minded football coach that I am a little bit concerned about this game. Couple that with the fact that we're also playing Bradley Chubb, who we just traded away last year and flipped that pick into getting Sean Payton to be our head coach. This one is setting up to be a weird little family reunion type thing. And it makes me a little bit uncomfortable. Coming into this matchup for the Dolphins, their defense has given up 318 rushing yards in two games, which is 159 yards per game on the ground. They've also given up 460 yards passing, which is 230 yards per game through the air, and they are averaging giving up 25 and a half points per game. Broncos fans will know this because we've had Vic Fangio as our head coach before and the guy who was calling our defense, but those aren't very good numbers for a Vic Fangio led defense. I truly expect our offense to maybe try to take advantage of the lack defense that the Dolphins have and score some points. The Broncos are averaging 24 and a half points per game on 108 yards rushing per game and 242 and a half yards through the air per game. We're set up perfectly to continue our good offensive output. And hopefully in this game, we can get a complete offensive game from the entire offense, all four quarters. The one thing I'm looking for us to do most of all is to get a very good run game going. I don't know what it is, but it feels like we haven't really relied on the run game like I thought we were going to this year. And I think this might be the week to really get Javante and Samaje going. I think that they should both eat each have at least 15 carries this game. And obviously they're gonna get targets too out of the backfield, but we need to get the run game going just so that we can keep the Dolphins offense off the field. We almost need to take a similar approach to this game like we would against the Chiefs and keep Patrick Mahomes on the sideline and not on the field throwing passes. And the reason I say we need to get the run game going is because in week two, Miami's pass rush recorded four sacks and eight QB hits. That's something to be concerned about because last week the Broncos offensive line gave up seven sacks to the commanders, mostly in the second half. So what we can do is get the ball moving on the ground, keep their defense honest and not allow their, their pass rush to pin their ears back and come after Russell Wilson. And then when we have the opportunity, get a little play action going, little rollout game and let Russ hit those deep passes down the field to Marvin Mims and Jerry Judy and Cortland Sutton. As far as the Broncos defense is concerned, <laughs> This game has me a little bit worried. Miami's offense is awesome. 
like really good. They're currently scoring 30 points per game on 107 and a half yards rushing and 357 and a half yards passing per game. That is a very, very good offense. That's over 450 yards a game. This offense is putting up crazy numbers and Tua is a reason for that. Now Jalen Waddle is going through the concussion protocol this week. I don't know if he's going to be able to play or not. If he doesn't play, that will bode well for our defensive backfield. If Waddle's out, our DBs won't have to focus on two very good wide receivers and they'll just have to put their focus on one. Tyreek Hill, the fastest football player I've ever seen in my entire life. So when it comes to the matchup with Tyreek Hill, what we what we need to see is a true PS2 masterclass covering this guy. I know that Broncos fans wanna see it and I wanna see it myself, but I don't think he's gonna be following Tyreek all around the field. But I do think that whenever PS2 is on Tyreek, it's going to be a win for Pat Sertan. So what our defense needs to do against this offense truly is to make them run the football. As I mentioned, they're only doing 107 and a half yards a game on the ground. So if we make them run the football, which sounds like it's something that they don't like to do, I think we could put ourselves in a very good space to win this matchup. And by doing this, we do what is most important against teams with high powered offenses. We eliminate the big plays. As far as the coaching matchup, typically I talk about head coach versus head coach because that's truly a difference maker when it comes to the NFL. But in this matchup specifically, this one's going to be more interesting because Mike McDaniel and Sean Payton are both very, very, very intelligent offensive play callers. And the defensive coordinators are both former Broncos head coaches which is just the strangest thing. And so really in this game, what it's gonna come down to is Sean Payton's play calling versus Vic Fangio's defense and Mike McDaniel's play calling versus Vance Joseph's defense. I like the matchup of Sean Payton's offense versus Vic Fangio's defense. What I'm concerned about is Mike McDaniel's offense versus Vance Joseph's defense. Mike McDaniel is dope. I love this guy. He brings a lot of energy. He's funny to listen to in press conferences. And the way that he works with his quarterback and with his offense is just awesome to watch. But when you have to play the guy, it's not as fun as it seems. So again, I think the Broncos are gonna have to really focus on eliminating the big play because Mike McDaniel can draw those things up anytime, any day. All of these coaches have ties to the Denver Broncos, right? Mike McDaniel was a ball boy for the Broncos. Sean Payton, currently the head coach of the Denver Broncos. Vance Joseph, currently the defensive coordinator for the Denver Broncos and former head coach of the Denver Broncos. Vic Fangio, former head coach of the Denver Broncos. So top to bottom, this coaching matchup is going to be weird, crazy, fun to watch. And I hope that what we see is the Broncos coaches show their actual abilities in this game because I know a lot of Broncos country is not happy with Vance Joseph right now. I think Vance Joseph will be able to change a lot of Broncos country's opinion about him if he puts together a really good game plan against this Dolphins offense. So like I covered in the beginning, Miami is a six and a half point favorite going into this matchup and the over under is set at 48 points. This game's gonna be interesting. Before the season started, I picked the Dolphins to win this game. And to be honest, I think I'm still right there. For this game, I have the Broncos losing 27 to 30. But God, do I hope I'm wrong. We can't start 0-3. Please prove me wrong. Please don't let this go to 0-3. I think we can win this game, but as far as my prediction goes and the way that the numbers look, I just don't think that they can do it this week. We'll see. So let's go ahead and move into our game picks for this week. But first, we have to check out how the group is going. So if you haven't joined the Broncos Hub Pick'em group, you can go ahead and do that. There will be a link in the description below. And the password is we hate KC because it's just the truth. So let's look at the rankings here. Uh, looks like Chad Smith, Silky Johnson kind of walked away with that first place spot here, 22 and 10. I'm sitting at 19 and 13 here tied with Matthew. And then at the very bottom, gotta get your picks in y'all. I know some people missed week one, but it looks like some people missed week two as well. So if you wanna get your picks in, you still have time to maybe catch up. But if you haven't done so yet, be sure to make your selections before Thursday night. It's locked in by the time Thursday night game starts. So let's go ahead and make these picks, shall we? Okay, 49ers are too good. That's too easy, too easy. Browns don't look very good. I'm kind of concerned about Sean, Deshaun Watson and the Titans are coming off a win over the Chargers. So I'm gonna take the Titans in this one. Falcons have been fun to watch, but the Lions are also very good. 
I'm gonna take the Lions in this one, but we will see what that looks like. I wish this had like the spread and everything on it. Saints at Packers. Let's take, let's take the Packers in this one. Uh, like I said, I'm taking the Dolphins to win this game. 96% of anyone who has voted on this game has selected the Dolphins. That breaks my freaking heart, man. Here we go, battle of two teams that were picked to win their divisions by lots of people, and they're both 0-2. Interesting. I'm gonna take the Vikings over the Chargers. Wouldn't it be great if the Chargers started 0-3? I would love that. Uh, Pats at Jets. This is a pretty long going streak, I think. Jets are pretty good. They have a good defense. Only 10% of people have picked the Commanders. Interesting, interesting. I'm gonna take the Commanders to win this one. That could be an upset here. Texans at Jags. I like Jacksonville. I like what the Jags are doing here. Let's see. You know what? Let's go with the Jags. I'm gonna take the Jags. I'm gonna agree with the other 97% of people. All right, and then Sunday, take the Ravens. Anthony Richardson's out. I don't even know who the quarterback is for the Colts right now. Panthers at Seahawks. I'm gonna take the Seahawks here. Gonna take the Chiefs over the Bears just because the Bears gotta figure some stuff out. Cowboys look really good and they might actually curb stomp the Cardinals in this game. So that'll be interesting. Sunday night, Steelers at Raiders. What an annoying game. I'm going to take the Steelers to win this one. And then we have another doubleheader on Monday night. Interesting. I'm going to take the Eagles over the Bucks, and I'm going to take the Bengals to turn it around over the Rams. We'll see what happens here. And then how many total points will be scored in Rams versus Bengals? Let's go with, well, negative. I don't want to pick negative. Let's go with 27 total points. So that's going to do it for this video. Thanks so much for hanging out. Like I said in the beginning, be sure to click that subscribe button, click the thumbs up, and click the bell to turn on notifications so that you're aware anytime I upload a new video. Let me know your predictions in the comments below. I'm eager to hear what they, what they are. If you're a Miami Dolphins fan, I want to hear what you have to say about this game as well. So who knows? we got another Sunday full of football, so this should be fun. Let's go Broncos. Touchdown!